and welcome to Clipper TV. I'm Amelia French. And I'm Asa Slayton. We hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving break and are back into the swing of school. We've certainly had a busy past couple of weeks, haven't we, Asa? We have. My schedule has been so packed that I didn't even get to see the sound of music. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in luck. Here's an exclusive backstage look. Here are three of our lovely cast members, Eva, Carrie, and Sophia. Von Trapp in person. How are you feeling between shows? Have you gotten enough sleep and such? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Eva, how is it being in a high school show? Cool. And then just going to the general one. Hey, so you're excited to go on? I'm so excited to go on. Last show. Gonna bring the energy? Ever. What's it like to be in a play with a bunch of high schoolers? Fine. It's fun. Is everyone nice? Yeah. What's the scariest part? Uh, the show. So, uh, Ben. Yeah. What has been your uh, favorite uh, role you played in Playmakers? Can you describe your costume, maybe? And, uh, maybe what's going inside your campus head? Sure, sure. I've only been one character, and I'm a Nazi. Oh. So, there you go. And what's going on inside my head? You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to take the bull by the horns, you know? I'm trying to show this play as boss. And that's really what I do. Okay, very good. Thank you for your time. I'm here with uh, John Harris Monroe, uh, who is playing Captain Von Trapp in the Sound of Music this year's fall musical. Uh, John, John Harris, Sam, John Harris, John Harrison Ford, John Harrison Ford Monroe the Third. What is your favorite character and why? Um, I would have to say that this is my favorite character, just because I really like being an old man. I really like having really hard hair. I really like the bling. It's a good perk. And um, when I had this, when I first put the suit on, it had fake money in the pockets, so I felt rich. That was great. Another event in the Y packed that's coming up soon is the annual winter concert. Here's Sophia with the details. Thank you, Amelia. I'm here at the y Pack. The stage is currently empty from the Sound of Music production two weeks ago. However, on December 4th, it will be set for the Winter Concert. There will be many groups performing that night, including Concert Choir and Chamber Choir and Band and Jazz Band. That's December 4th at 7 o'clock. Now, the stage is currently empty. However, backstage, the Chamber Choir is preparing diligently for their concert. <laughs> Well, that won't be the actual arrangement of the song we're performing. However, there will be kazoos on December 4th, and we will also be singing Carol of the Bells. Thank you, Sophia. And now let's head over to Nick, who conducted the student survey this week. Nick? Thanks, guys. Today, I will be going around asking students what they are thankful for. Hi, James. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I am thankful for the fact that I am alive and I have food, water, and clothing and shelter. Awesome. Hi guys, what are you guys thankful for this Thanksgiving? I'm thankful for Carrie. And I'm thankful for Amelia. <laughs> Hi Annie, what are you thankful for? Uh, my family. Hi Tyler, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? I'm thankful to see my family and see my grandfather, and I'm also thankful to be a part of the boys hockey team. Hey guys, what are you guys thankful for? Well Nick, I have to say I'm thankful for my friends. Having them be here for me. What about you, Henry? Uh, I'm thankful for all my friends and all the nice people in Yarmouth. And Walter, what about you? Well, I think I'm thankful for uh, going to such a great school like Yarmouth because there's a lot of opportunity here to have fun and be with your friends and a lot of learning. Hey guys, what are you guys thankful for? I'm thankful for my friend Thomas. And I'm thankful for Ben. Thanks, Nick. Hey, Asa, what are you thankful for? Um... Sports. What a coincidence! Here's Caleb with an update on the school's basketball team. 
Thanks, Amelia. I'm here with the boys' basketball captains, Adam Riggins, Christian Henry, and Chase Hughes. Guys, I'd like to start off by congratulating you on the championship season last year. Job well done. Um, I'd like to ask, what works so well about how are you going to incorporate it into this year's um, Well, that's a good question, Caleb. And I think it's, it's, it definitely stems from the camaraderie that we had uh, and the, the tightly knit group because we only had 12 guys on the team. You know, it's, it's not like soccer. You got 25 or other, other sports. You got a lot more. So just the, the close knit group we had. Yeah, and the seniors that left us last year, they were really good at incorporating everyone into the uh, close knit. Like Adam said, 12 guys. And us three, we're going to have to try to fill the captains that left last year. We're going to try, have to try to fill their shoes, which is going to be tough. Um, speaking about camaraderie, I know you guys are all really good friends. I know the team here is going to have good um, team chemistry. How is that going to translate to the court this year? Um, first off, I think we need to work on that to uh, get the team chemistry up to begin with before the season starts. And then when it comes to games and stuff, we have to be able to trust each other and be able to play with each other without having to worry about like what they're going to do. We can all just trust each other. Sounds like you guys are going to have another very successful season this year. But uh, what would you say will be your biggest obstacle going into this year's season? Um, I would definitely say that staying healthy and keeping a good focus on the season. Um, last year we had some key injuries that put us down on some points. Um, luckily we prevailed, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, bro I mean, I broke two of my toes and my wrist, so... And like I've, I haven't had a full season this year because of injuries all all four years, so I'm hoping I'll have uh, a full season this year. All right, uh, thank you guys very much. Good luck on the season, yeah. and uh, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Caleb. And now it's time for a few updates. First, the semi-formal dances tonight in the cafe. Also, your annual tree lighting is going to be held tomorrow at Town Hall at 5 p.m. And there's going to be carols, cider and you're going to meet, be able to meet Santa Claus. And lastly, don't forget about Mr. YHS on December 6th. Make sure you go to show your support for all of the contestants, including our very own Asa Slayton. And now, Clipper TV viewers, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right. It's time for the much-anticipated premiere yeah. of... Griffin's Corner! Corner! Oh hi, didn't see you there. Welcome to Griffin's Corner. I'm your host, Griffin O'Rourke. Griffin's Corner is the newest addition to Clipper TV in which I answer questions from viewers just like you. Today's question comes from Hopeless, Hopeless in the Hallway. <clears throat> How can I get my crush to notice me? Well, Hopeless, that's a fantastic question. So let's go over some of the weapons in your arsenal. You've got Facebook where you can like their posts, like their pictures, message them, and poke them, like, poke them, you know, that's great. You can Twitter them, you can Snapchat them, you can Instagram them. I mean, I'm not familiar with these, like, newfangled, like, whatevers, but yeah, you know, you can do them. Um, one that I used back in the day was uh, steal their dog. And you know, because when they come around, like, where's my dog? Where's... I have it, y you have the dog. It's a great conversation starter, seriously. I've used it for four or five times, definitely. So anyways, I'd like to end this as Tolstoy ends War and Peace. In the present case, it is as essential to surmount a consciousness of an unreal freedom and to recognize a dependence not perceived by our senses. There you have it. Thank you for that lovely insight. And remember, if you have a question for Griffin, keep your eyes peeled for a survey that will be sent out before our next episode airs. Your question may just end up on the show. That's right. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today. But could anything really follow the intuitive visionary of Griffin O'Rourke? From all of us here at Clipper TV Studio, thank you for watching, and we hope you have an enjoyable weekend. Hey, man, who's that cat coming down the street? I don't know, but it sounds to me like that Griffin man with the bones. Sure having himself a ball.